Help guide you. We've talked this first. Okay, yeah. I think catch your name before. My friends, I'm the plague. Would you like to be my friend? <laughs> Okay, let's just go to the MPR. Okay, if uh, guide you again. Let's do it. First, we're taking guide you. Let's see who. Who else should we take? I think we'll take Raptor. Maybe Gobbit? Yeah, this sounds good. Polo Harbor. The Tolo Harbor Industrial Complex, the sprawling maze of warehouses, auto fabrication facilities, shipping container mazes, and corporate power. If something corporate owned is shipped through Hong Kong, it invariably moves through these streets. The Renraku shipping facility lies far enough away from the heart of Tolo Harbor 
so you won't have to worry about corporate security other than the on-site guards and Renraku's extraterritoriality means that any fighting won't risk backup from rent a -Cop. Um, jeez. Got a lot of random stuff in our inventory. I don't even remember picking this up. Um, let's bring this. Uh, she should also bring a med kit. Um, Raptor, you have no res, so let's bring that. And this. Let's go get you a grenade as well. You want two of them. Oh, sweet. Wait, maybe I can actually loan her this spell now. This is the facility. Past that entrance is the warehouse and test laboratories. Ishida and his team should arrive mere minutes after we breach their defenses. Mm. Shouldn't we try and make this stealthy? That will not be possible, I'm afraid. A facility of this importance warrants a maximum security presence. Any covert points of entry will be guarded and trapped. We will have no choice but to go in through the front door. While the Red Samurai provide a good backup team, there are too few of them to mount a standing guard. This means we will be facing standard Renraku security forces. While they are not as potent as better equipped security, Knight Errant for instance, they are still skilled combatants. Great, I love dealing with corporate security. They're like a stake. You're never surprised by what you get, but you're never disappointed either. This sounds just fine, Nibbles. I'm glad it meets your approval, Gobbit. I would hate to think you were bored. I like that Gaijus' nickname is Nibbles. Medical supplies. Let's just go and find that. Channeled Haste 3.
let's just have him use Ghost Ray. Overclock. All deployed. Oh, that barrel. That is super juicy. I had to do it. Get you, get in there. I don't use water stamps. No. And maybe we'll stay on water stamps for just a little bit, but I won't go to metal stamps. <laughs> oh no, let's. Yeah, let's go with heaven. are in the way of me to tell us this square. There we go. <laughs> Why did he walk right into the fart gas? Saw this man in hack. Or don't. Let's 
surrounded by drones. You should go grab these medical supplies. I forgot we have four wins. Throw a shuriken at him. <laughs> nice. Not good enough. Yeah, I'll let three car match. Well, we won't have any camera feed. Reactor, you can move up here and activate post check. Oh, you can just chill there, Gobbit. Actually, we have Gobbit try and run over here. Yeah, start making your way over there. This guy will probably come running in here. Is there someone here that will come running from that way? Okay. They want to be in like the biggest of the circles. Or the one that has like the most connections. Let's just chill out next to this guy. Draw him next round. Please. 
works. No one needs healing. Spider throat. Good job. Good coaster. So two doors on this side. There's a shutter we can't get through on this side. They'll have laundry baskets. Oh. What's in this room? Quarantine. Either. I probably can't add my low decking. Something I can pick up. Oh, a drone. And it looks like I can send a drone through here, so. Let's send in the wolf out. like a total waste of time. Good job. You will take that, that's a stash. Take that. Wait, I didn't fill Raptor's slots? That's that's madness. Wow, well, such a stash anyway. Oh, there's a person right there. I didn't even didn't even notice. A scared scientist. Let's see what our options at the quarantine terminal are. I don't like standing on this thing that looks like a chute that'll open up and fuck me out. Connecting you with your dreams. Oh, what is this thing, Gaiju? This is the control panel for the quarantine room beyond it. Standard design across most Renraku facilities. Parazoologists use it to study the responses of paranormal animals to external stimuli. What kind of stimulus do they expose the creatures to? What is the purpose of your tests? The animals are exposed to high voltage current, open flame, toxic gases, etc. The primary purpose of these experiments is to identify the best specimens and reserve them for breeding. Those that are of sufficient stock survive, the rest do not. Such survivors make excellent guard animals once cybernetically controlled. Uh, okay, that doesn't sound super fun. So I can't do anything with it yet. I'm sure we'll be able to later. Give me one sec.
And I'm back. So let's see. Guess we go talk to the scientist. Okay. Cool glasses, bro. Don't hurt me, please. Wait, it's you. Saru? Munraku management said you were dead, but I knew they were lying. But I didn't expect that you would be the one to answer my request. This is a good omen, my friend. Indeed, you were lied to. The shame of the Red Samurai suffered due to their inability to kill me is undoubtedly something they wish to hide. I am glad to see that you are well, but I am no longer Saru. That code name is long gone. Now I am Gaichu. Who is this dude? His name is Tanjiro, Sas Tanjiro Sasaki. A senior researcher, he has served Renraku for more than a decade. Do you recall how I had guarded similar facilities? They were usually in service to protecting Tanjiro's projects. He likes to torture animals. It's true, and believe me, I can help you with what you're here for. Um... Huh. We're for a few reasons. Hmm, your fixer got the job because I've arranged this. Why do you think it was so easy to get here? You're here not just for the drone, but to fake someone's death. My death. That's true. If a group of heavily armed Shadowrunners break in here, it's completely believable that I would be killed in the process. As of right now, I've suppressed the alarms. I can undo that, and once I've reached a safe distance, I will. The Samurai will arrive just a moment too late to save the research. And me. Okay. The Red Samurai team will rush to this building as soon as the alarms are released. I'll give you the code I wrote into my Overwatch program. Just use it on one of the security mainframes when you're ready. You'll have time to set up any ambush you like. Typically, we would send the main force in through the front, leaving one team member aside to flank the opposition. It would be advantageous for us to isolate one of them and pick them off before the main force engages us. You can use this quarantine room. It can be programmed to destroy contaminants or apply lethal amounts of electricity. Regardless of which you pick, it should certainly kill anyone attempting to pass through it. Yes, yes, that could work. If we were to make the quarantine room look like the point of ingress, they would send at least one of the team there while the main squad utilized standard routes. Namely, entering through the front door. The plague. We should let Tanjiro go. He has given us more than enough to accomplish the task at hand. And he is a friend of sorts. I would be sorry if any harm came to him. Yeah, get out of here, Tanjiro. Thank you. You have no idea what it's been like living under Renraku's thumb. You're giving me the chance to start again. Hopefully with a better life. And you, it's because of you that I found the strength to leave Renraku. That they couldn't find or kill you was a sign that I could escape as well. I admire your tenacity, your drive. Thank you, Tanjiro. That means more to me than I think you know. Go, they'll be coming for us soon enough. I want you to be well out of here when they arrive. Sweet. Drone? Drone? 
drone. I picked up prototype drone. Okay, so now let's try and go use the uh, quarantine computer. Set the trap. If we bait the quarantine room, one of the team members will move through it to flank us. Since Tanjiro's program gives us access to their comm channels, we can choose who to draw in. The other three will enter through the front door. I can bait the quarantine room to draw in one of the samurai. They will split up, but they won't deviate from standard protocol very much. The remaining three will remain together. Oh, jeez. Um... We have three choices. We can bring in Sasaki and eliminate her magical support. We could draw in Takagawa to cut down on long-range sniper fire. Or we can draw in whoever the heavy gunner replacement is. We can only draw in one, however. Oh, jeez. Um, 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 what... Hmm. what should we do? Maybe the heavy gunner? Yeah, the heavy gunner. It's made it for the heavy. Okay. Let me use this elevator. Oh, what's this? Signal alarms. Okay, now let's go jack in. Yes, I can. Thank goodness. That was close. Well, that was close. Okay. So we have multiple ways we can go. Uh, do I want to get in here? Maybe I do. Over barrels to basement? Sure. I don't know what the point of that is, but I'm good with that. Fuck. Um... Yeah, there's no way we're getting past that. Oh, it still gets a plus 20 traits, even though it has no action. Wow, I'm just total garbage in here. Both 
Come on, run, 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 run. Where am I going? Oh, this looks like a nightmare to get through. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it was actually a cakewalk. I don't know. Okay, data store, elevator door. Okay, let's do Simon Says. 8638. 4, 4, Four eight one eight seven nine. We did it. A data store. Okay, so that's a lot of work for an elevator door. Hopefully that does something good. And we delivered barrels as well. Do I suppress the alarm first? I don't know, I'm saving. Signal alarm from down here. This does look like a better place to set up camp. Let's do it. Alright. Now they will learn what it is to face me in true combat. No more running, no more hiding. Tonight we end this for good. You can hang out here. Yeah, Drew, you can just hang out here. Uh, Guy Chu, don't hang out there. That is where Gobbit must hang out. You're fine right there. They arrive in one round. Why did I summon the spirit already? I am an idiot. That's fine. Let's 
Sorry, heavy gunner. My spirit's already gone. That's fine. Ow. Yeah, stand next to barrels. You've fallen right into my trap. Those weren't toxic barrels as well. I'm oh, sorry, Sasaki. You're dead already. So these are Renraku's finest. I didn't haste you. Don't let him get away. Actually, you might have to just run in there. Let's throw a shirt. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. You know what to do, gotcha. Confront him. He's still alive? Kaichu, you honorless cur. I regret the day I ever began teaching you. You're truly depraved to kill your own brothers rather than submit to what is right. Yes, Gaichu, that is my name, as everything of my old life has been taken from me. What is honor if it is built on a lie? What is duty if the dogma behind it is corrupt? What do you know of it, vermin? Every red samurai who has become subhuman has taken their life. Everyone but you. You are a disgrace to the order and a disgrace to your people. You've been blinded by indoctrination, Ishida. For years you were taught that to be pure was to be powerful, that metahumans, the infected, and the deformed were to be scorned for their weakness. Yet here I stand, and there you lie, broken. You think a victory over Sasaki, Takagawa, and me makes you superior? Ha. Huh. You'll spend the rest of your useless days cowering in the darkness, eating the flesh of your betters. You're no better than an animal, skilled though you may be. You said the Red Samurai were the best, the strongest, the most capable. Those who were non-human were unworthy of consideration. You told me I would be better for having joined you. But it's a lie. I was infected and I became better than I was. Your own blindness allowed me... Your own blindness allowed me to escape, blind to my skill and blind to the power of the impure. I was not superior because I was Red Samurai. I was Red Samurai because I was superior. I choose my own fate. I make my own destiny. I will show you the strength of my disease, Ishida. I will make you like me, and you will be cast out, just as I was. I survived and remained intelligent because I have the will to do so, and you say as much. Uh, yeah, I don't really know about this, but go for it. You think I'll let you infect me, monster? I'll do what you were too weak to do. I'll take my own life like the 47 Ronin of old. Such a foolish boy. Foolish? You underestimate me, old man. After I cripple your arms, you will have no means to kill yourself. The disease will burn through you like a fire, consuming every inch of your humanity. Then we shall see, Gaichu, and if you're wrong, I shall meet you again in my next life and try to teach you to do better. Uh, this is between the two of them, but... It doesn't really feel that right. I don't know. Yeah, do it, you will. I won't interfere. Come, I will show you your own inner weakness. The sounds that follow are viscerally, intensely horrifying. The crunch of bone mates with the sound of wet flesh tearing under the pressure of jagged ghoul teeth. And as a high counterpoint comes Ashida's screaming of horror and pain. What undoubtedly some, and undoubtedly some measure of the terror of what Gaichu is doing to him. Eventually, Ishida passes out. Gaichu rises, wiping copious amounts of blood from his mouth with the back of his hand. It is accomplished. He is unconscious, but he will live. Let us be done with this. Uh, yeah, that feels pretty crappy, but whatever. We're done. We never got to meet for what's his face. Nameless heavy gunner guy.
The sun's rays paint Hong Kong's mountains in a palette of orange and gold as they speed by outside the train. With a final flash, the sun dips below the horizon, foretelling the inevitable descent into night. Gaichu is silent as you walk back to the MTR station. His body remains as tense as the cables on a suspension bridge, but his expression is triumphant. Ishida has been punished, and all that awaits him is a slow descent into hunger and possibly madness. Uh, so let's go talk to Gaichu, and then we'll do like our actual missions. Oh, I'm going to have pay data to post, and I guess payment to claim. And I forgot that was something that we're actually getting paid for by um, that scientist, Tam Tanjiro. Nothing new in the inbox. Sell the experimental drone. Can I keep it? Okay, I guess the drone was paying it. Okay, pay data posted. Oh, jeez. You must listen to your Decker when your Decker says, I don't have control of that turret yet. <laughs> Muffin Top Ninja. Do anything else with that drone? What is this? A mission item? Non functional in combat, so yeah. So. Nice. Brave of you. Yeah, yeah, I guess that we shouldn't have uh, been doing side work with that kindly. Talk to get you. The dim cabin's air is thick with the pungency of incense. A small, rudely constructed altar sits near Gaichu's box of mementos. It consists of a wooden box, a few trinkets, and a bowl for burning incense. Gaichu himself is polishing his sword again. He runs a claw along the length of the blade, feeling and listening for nicks and dents. Good evening, the plague. A fine evening, isn't it? What can I do for you? Um, yeah, do you want to talk, man? Yes, of course I have thoughts about it, but why would I burden you or anyone else with them? 
If you would like to talk about it, then we may, by all means. I am a private person by nature, however. This is why I did not seek you out to speak on it. Yeah, yeah, I want to talk about it. A curious question. Am I all right? I, the one who survived, who has now shed his old life entirely, who no longer needs to worry about assassins on his heels. Yes, I am more than all right. I am free. The team is all dead, save for Ishida. He will know what it is like to feel the disease burn through his brain, stripping logic and artistry and leaving only hunger in its wake. When it is done, I am certain he will be an animal, while I remain whatever it is that I am. Gaichu, but one that may speak and act as a free being. There is some poetic justice in this, I feel. His claims of my weakness mirrored by his own descent into feral madness. And yet here I am, one with enough willpower to survive and prosper despite my ill fortune. You don't think it was a step too far? No, no I do not. Understand, Ashida was a product of the same training that shaped me, but unlike me, he has never had the training proven wrong. He always believed he was the strongest, the best, and that he was unbeatable by lesser creatures. He would never have learned. His xenophobia and arrogance would have ruled him his entire life. Men like Ishida are the reason that Japan refuses to accept that the Awakening was a natural affair, and ships metahumans to Yomi Island. I was taught that people like Duncan, Gobbit, and Isabel are subhuman. Yet I have seen what they can accomplish, and I am, am impressed. <sighs> what will you do now? Surely you are joking with me. I will stay here and aid you in your endeavors. I have no other life to turn to, nor anyone else to call a friend. As you have aided me, so too will I aid you. This life in the shadows is the most free and open I have ever felt. I have no desire to go or do anything else. Perhaps later I will, but not any time soon. Alright. Later, my man. Uh, so now, what is what is our plan? We are going to go meet Dreamland. Lamo. Let's do it. Maybe we can go look for a Cyberland to buy real quick. Maybe we'll talk to Duncan. Hey, Duncan. Welcome back. Yeah, you ain't got any time. You have anything to say to me. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, MTR, that's the last thing to do. Uh, and let's see, uh, let's go look for a cyber limb or something. Show me your services. Uh, cyberware. Yeah, we could just get a cyber leg. Oh, you know, and a certain cephalon would be cool. Cool. Give me that brain implant. Later, man.
let's go. The tenement that Dreamland lives in smells of mold and desperation. The people living here are the kind who don't want to be found. Okay, this is the right place to play. Emily should be in the first apartment. Is she dangerous? She shouldn't be. Emily's a decker, but is really more into programming than she is violence. Her handle is Dreamland, after all. She quit running last year. Something about some sort of activist activity she used to be into. A bunch of big money execs who are holding a grudge. Emily's from Berlin, but she moved to Hong Kong after the F-State collapsed. The Shock Wellen Rider, that's the group that she worked for. We're supposed to protect- Oh! Wait, wait, wait. Is... Is Emily that Decker who was, um... Blitz's girlfriend? Maybe. Yeah, I heard about the fall of the F State. It sounded like chaos. Well, I heard too. An experiment in sustained institutional anarchy? Great environment for a shadow runner. But it ended up just like communism did. Another pipe dream. The German government gave the corporations the go-ahead to invade, and they forced the anarchists to retreat to the eastern part of the city. Now Berlin's run by the corps just like Hong Kong. I bet they wind up building a wall again. Wouldn't put it past them. Okay, any more should know. No clue, really. I've never met her in meat space. Just be your charming self, I guess. I'm sure everything will work out just fine. Actually, I've seen it. Was that Blitz's girlfriend's name? Um... Yeah, it was. I'll bet you that it was the same Emily. That's great. The apartment is no better than the hallway. Empty fast food cups and packages of dried snack food are strewn about the room. In the corner, a box of cat litter sits filled to overflowing. You don't see any cats. There's a patched together matrix terminal sitting on a stack of crates connected to a banged up cyber deck. Is she using a litter box herself? That's a little strange. Within arm's reach of the cyber deck is a 20 something woman with pale white skin, dirty blonde hair, and a bleak expression. So you're Isabel, huh? I didn't expect. The dwarf? Yeah, I get that a lot. No, oh, I didn't expect you to be so pretty. I should never have agreed to this, Isabel. I should never have even responded to your message. If the oligarch swine who've been hunting me find out where I am... Um, they won't find out from us. Uh-huh. This is the woman I told you about. She needs the software that you developed to inhibit your cortical implant. She needs what? I don't think I should be getting into this. You have a business proposition. I don't know, woman. I'm kind of done with the business. In case you're not up on current events, I've got a kick line of mercs and bounty hunters after me. Messing around with the headwear that the shock and well the shock well and rider installed in me is the last thing on my mind. Um well, yeah, let's be charismatic. Yeah, I need the soft recreate somehow what happened to my daddy. Your father, huh? Sounds rough. Is he dead? I doubt it. At least I don't think he's dead yet. That's why this is important. Been there, or something like there. It's the ambiguity that'll kill you. Okay, give me a minute. 
Emily grabs her cyber tech and jacks into it. Her jaw goes slack and her fingers hover over the keyboard, tapping keys at a blinding speed. When she finishes, she jacks out and ejects the data stick from the deck. Here, modify this taser with it and use it on your target. The jolt should stop the memory wipe process before it starts. I don't have enough money to give her a tip. Thank you. Don't mention it. I wish every problem was that easy. Okay. Sweet. Come on, Izzy. Well, that was easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, acquire the plastic faced man's itinerary. Itinerary. Jeez. Uh, so let's take Duncan. Got it. And Isabel. Check Kip me. Isabel has modified a taser to introduce Dreamland's cortical inhibitor program into the plastic-faced man's neural network. That should stop his headwear from completing a memory wipe and allow you to interrogate him for information about Raymond Black. But first, you'll need to find him. Kindly Cheng has made contact with an underground information broker named Zhao... Zhao Ji, who has managed to obtain the plastic-faced man's complete itinerary. With it, you can choose the time and place to perform an, ex an extraction and find out what he knows. Shao Ji works out of an abandoned night market in Shek Kip Mei, the Xing House Court. Sure. Okay, I uh, have the taser, though. I think I need it for this job. Why is Isabel's deck in the stash? Oh. Required global mission state. Isabel trust false less. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Might be some kind of bug. Uh, so it's Lone Gobbit, our wild aim. Gobbit needs a med kit. Uh, you need a res, Duncan. You need a res, Isabel. Gobbit, take this spirit. Um. Wow, we have so many of these level 2 medkits. Just to hear, take them, Isabel. Actually, take one of these uh, drone repair kits. Alright. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, we gotta spend our karma. Is there even a chance for me to get 27 karma so I can max out my drone combat? I'm already, like, beyond the point where that's possible. Because if so, I could just spend my points on increasing my decking a little bit better. I'll just, I'll just save it for now. HKPF involved in shooting near Repulse Bay. Developing. Suspect has been described as a male orc. Ten orcs. Fish? Why don't more people have umbrellas? More caged owls. And I don't know, a caged jellyfish as well. I guess there are lots of these little jellyfishes. Okay, so I guess we're just going in here. Look at this door panel. Okay, I don't know the code. Nerps. The dwarf is the queen of her little hive. A nattering swarm of snitches, stoolies, and spies. Avarice gleams in her eyes. They dart around you, taking in morsels of information so quickly they appear to vibrate. She mumbles little mnemonic rhymes to herself as she tags and labels you all. Ah yes, the new on the scene runner, the plague. Mm. My friend in Hyoi said you'd be coming to see me. Um we for information about the man with the plastic face. Very timely intel, very timely. 
I have his complete up to the minute itinerary. Where he'll be, who he'll be with, security coverage, the deluxe package. How much? Unfortunately, the deluxe package is no longer for sale, nor is any information about him. So sorry. I received another offer, a better offer, <laughs> to take it off the market just before you arrived. From who? Li Tai Lung's client. I believe you know the company. I feel really bad about this, but the offer was too good to pass up. Way too good. You don't want to work with Josephine. That's the thing, the plague. I do. Attaching myself to her is smart. Very smart. Mm. Tsang's big in Hong Kong, and getting bigger. She's already on the executive council and is a front runner for the next chairperson position. And all I need to do is make sure you don't walk out of here alive. Ambush. Nanobus. <sighs> A blue lantern. <laughs> um, gob it. Do something for Dunk. Put a prox mine here. Thank you. And then just getting covered. And got it, you get in cover. And I will get in further back to cover. stacked up too tightly. Can we arrest her? You're under arrest, lady. I didn't mean, see that guy. Oh, why is everyone going for Duncan? No one's going to walk into the prox mine? Yes. Okay.
That's the captain over there. Oh, I missed. Ugh. Uh, well, okay, they're both out cold. Gobbit, uh, give some healing. Code works zero 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 six. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, clap him in iron. Good job, Doctor. Shao Chi left her computer unlocked. She has the plastic faced man's complete itinerary. This will tell us everywhere he's going to be for the next 24 hours. No, I'm sorry, but if Josephine knows that Shao uh, Chi was going to sell this information or had this information even, wouldn't they just change the plastic faced man's itinerary? Like, uh, this sounds like it would only make sense to be useful if, if they didn't know that we have it, or that we could potentially have it. Yeah. 
Anything promising? Absolutely. I just need to run some searches on these locations. See if I can get blueprints, photos. Hmm. First, the bad news. He's got security detail that drives him from place to place. Six corporate agents, plus the driver. Anytime he's on the move, he's in a reinforced bulletproof limo. He's also got a personal bodyguard that's with him at all times. But there are some windows of opportunity we can take advantage of. When he's going someplace, they drop him off and leave him in the hands of local security, if any. The bodyguard stays behind, but the other six guards stay with the driver. The detail itself is shared by a few executives, so they will be with someone else until his next scheduled pickup time. The convoys are on a schedule managed by the master system at Sang HQ. Okay, I've got three good leads here. I think we can run an extraction on any one of these. Number one, the parking garage at Central Plaza. He's there for a meeting in an hour. We can grab him on the way out. It's still secured corporate property, so there will be resistance, but it's the weakest out of the corporate properties he visits. Plus side, there won't be any civilians. Access is limited, and he's listed as a VIP in their system. Not bad. Enclosed space means he can't run. Okay. What's the next lead? Next one's a bit personal. Mr. Plastic has a mistress and visits her twice a week. Today's the day he'll be at Fa Yuan Tower, building for two hours. It's not corporate property, but it is privately owned. The management company has a security contract on it, so it's likely we'll have a fight on our hands trying to get out of there with him in tow. It'll be less crowded than the parking garage, but the lady might complicate things. Interesting. Who goes for a plastic-faced guy? Alright, what's the last one? We have to grab him before he gets home tonight. Once he's home, we're screwed. He's staying in the Tsang Executive Arcology, guarded 24-7 by corporate security and two blocks from the HKPF HQ. The final location we could grab him is his last stop for the evening. It's a locally owned public SimSense theater, a hole in the wall that specializes in underground horror flicks. He's there for an hour and 45 minutes, and a security detail will be all the way across town to pick someone else up. We'll probably have to deal with local police only. This is a public theater. It's going to be packed with regular people just trying to take in a movie. Oof. What do you think, Duck? Garage is my pick. Fires in the garage will probably provide cover, limited entrances, and exits to worry about. Small amount of collateral damage. The Simpsons parlor and the apartment are going to end in blood. Maybe less of our blood, but more of someone else's. I don't want that on my head. What about you, Gobbit? Garage doesn't have enough escape routes. Too secure. Too many potential reinforcements. I'm not into it. Personally, I'd go at the mistress's place. It's like a giant middle finger right in his face. It sends a message. Don't mess with us. What about you, Izzy? Parking garage. It's a compromise. I think the benefits outweigh the downsides, but it will be a straight fight the whole way through. Oh, that sounds so boring, though. Um, the mistress apartment sounds pretty good to me. I definitely don't want the Simpsons theater. Um, oh, man. Uh, mistress's apartment? Maybe? Uh, um. Yeah, I want to do the mistress's apartment. In that case, I've got the code to the front door. Here. It's 112798. You'll need it to get in. Sweet. 
dope. And yeah, maybe we can catch him with his underpants down. Swanky looking apartments. Okay, the music suddenly kicked in. Why is the music so much louder here? Let's turn it down. So we have the code, we'll, we'll use it in a sec. So let's explore here. Take. Um. One one two seven nine eight. Ooh, fancy. Yes, so there's our classic face, dude. Okay, that's safe. That is a big girl. Oh shit, on. Is that a mat or is it like a hoverboard or a skateboard? Or like a huge band aid on the floor. Um. So, okay, can we. Can we use this from here? No.
Episode 12. Okay, let's go shock him. I don't get a chance to haste anyone. Sorry, get back here, Duncan. Rounds until he's unconscious. Why is everything red? Mission failed. But we inhibited him. That's bullshit. What's that? Okay, so let's do this a little bit differently. We've run up to him. We use this. He'll be unconscious in three rounds. No, Duncan, don't do that. Okay, Duncan, go beat the crap out of this lady. Oh, I thought I saw Duncan selected. Sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to shoot you. Wow, that plastic vest man hits hard. Yeah, Duncan, you gotta take this lady out. Nice. You're mine now. Be our lookout. Okay, who are these guys? Shadow Runners. Oh, Knight Errant, okay. And this corporate bodyguard.
Ooh, look at all that blood. It's real grippy. Okay, more people. Jeez. Take out the mages. Got it. Can you heal me from there? No. We can heal down. Oh yeah, those guys down there. Nice. What is this? Detonate all mines currently active. Mines. There are no mines. Sniper. Really? Okay, Duncan. The captain, he's under arrest. Yeah, is it still hasted? Oh, let's haste him again. Is 
Does that guy's gonna bleed out? Who cares about him? Goblet will help me next round. Oh, how did he not bleed out? His health bar's so slim. Take this hidey hole. Sorry, dude. What's up, dude? Neural inhibitor device seems to be working. Let's get this guy to a secure location and get some answers out of him. I'll calm the crew and have him meet us. Uh, who's saying that, actually? Alright, let's move. The crew is silent as you lead your captive to the rooftop rendezvous you designated before the run. Just as planned, you find the others waiting there for you. Li Tai Lung's artificial features are molded into an expression of aloof intellect and mocking rigidity. The plastic that makes up his face is soft, flexing with the motion of his underlying musculature. Overlapping wafers of silver and bronze foil buried inside the material catch the light as he moves. It's the work of a master craftsman. Cyberware as a form of modern art, likely commissioned at modern art prices. An ostentatious display of status and wealth. The plastic-faced man examines the zip ties that bind his wrists with an expression of detached amusement. Isabel runs a long cable from her PDA to the jack in the back of his head and nods at you. <coughs> Well, this is interesting, I must say. I don't recall ever having been in this situation before. Usually, I simply awaken to find myself in a strange new environment, wondering what happened. Not this time. You know my name, too. Very impressive. Looking at the lot of you, I think it's safe to assume that a violent extraction of information is the next order of business? Oh, you can bank on that, asshole. So, you chose to grab me in an intimate moment. I suppose that's wise. Only moderate resistance. But the girl paid for it, didn't she? Clearly, the preservation of many human life isn't a high priority for you. We didn't kill your girlfriend. She'll have a headache when she wakes up, but she'll be fine. The plague. We have a problem. Dreamland's neural inhibitor software isn't interacting with this guy's cortical implant the same way it worked with her own. It's only going to slow the memory wipe process. Crap. Do something. I would if I could, but we're talking about software I didn't write, interacting with two different pieces of headware I've never seen before. We're lucky this works at all. I'll try and key in some buffering routines or something to slow it as much as I can. My confidence is low. This guy's memory is going to get wiped one way or another. I'd start asking questions. Tense. Very tense. I guess I'll answer your questions rather slowly. Uh, come on. You're a professional, dude. I was joking, of course. I'm going to give you what you want. My clients know I'm a professional and that I take extraordinary precautions to protect their secrets. If those precautions were compromised, it was due to an extreme circumstance. 
You ask your questions, the plague. I'll answer them as efficiently as I can. When we're done, I'll shake hands with a stranger and walk away wondering what just happened. Um, what is prosperity? Prosperity Tower is Sang Mechanical Engineering's corporate head headquarters. Prosperity is also one of Josephine Sang's pet projects. Which one do you want to know about first? TikTok. The project. Well, that's going to be challenging. You see, the Prosperity Project is Joe Sang's best kept secret. And the best way to keep secrets is not tell anyone, even someone whose memory can be wiped. All I know is that Prosperity is something built deep inside Kowloon Walled City. Some kind of experiment her son was working on. <laughs> Edward Sang. No, at Raymond Black, my father. Hey, Mr. Plastic, maybe you could settle a bet between me and my sister. Now I think Raymond is still alive, but my sister here isn't so sure. Which is it, buddy? Raymond Black, dead or alive. I got 20 new yen on this. Guys, a status bar just popped up. It isn't moving yet, but you never know when it might take a jump. It's stuck at zero right now, but the process is starting and there's nothing I can do to stop it. Here, give me that. I'll show you something. Huh. And this is a calculated gamble. You're running out of time and holding all the guns. I have information you want, and betting that if I share it with you, you won't kill me when this is over. Yeah, sure. Do it. The plastic-faced man takes the PDA from Isabel and stares down at the screen. His eyes become unfocused and he stands like a statue. A low-resolution video recording pops onto the screen. A small, weathered man, possibly in his 70s, is strapped into a high-tech chair and connected to an elaborate scientific instrument behind him. The recording is from the first-person perspective, presumably the plastic-faced man's. This is from when I first brought the asset, your father, to Prosperity Tower. After I took him from the tea house on the docks. The video continues, and a confident voice can be heard from off-screen, a woman's. You can't make out what she says. The point of view turns to the right, and a graceful woman of indeterminate age steps into view. She is clearly advanced in years, but access to a nourishing diet and cutting-edge pharmaceuticals afford her the vitality of someone much younger. Speaks directly to the camera. Her tone is hard. I warned you to be gentle with him, Mr. Lee. He looks as if someone tased him. I assure you, Miss Sang, I was gentle. He walked out of the tea house under his own power. May, may I have some water, Mother? My throat feels like it's on fire. Yes, of course, Edward. I'll have someone bring you some ice chips. Your son has apparently been through some sort of ordeal. He appeared demented at times, and he's been mumbling something about stopping prosperity, I think. Well, yes, well, that won't be happening. We won't be stopping prosperity, Edward. I want you to get that out of your mind, do you understand? I understand perfectly well, Mother. There's no need to shout. But I won't give up. Prosperity must be stopped. All those poor people. I know, Edward. I know. Those poor people. I've done a lot of good to make up for it since you left. Shelters, hospitals, all sorts of good work. And now it's time to do something for you. Something I should have done a long time ago, perhaps. From the left side of the screen, a man enters in a white lab coat. The woman looks up and nods, and the lab-coated man places a chrome apparatus on the old man's head. What is this, Mama? What are you doing to me? I'm fixing you, Edward. All you can see is failure. You're incapable of seeing the good in what you've done. The man in the white lab coat presses a button on Raymond's chair and a robotic arm swings into view. A cobalt blue light springs from its tip and the arm quickly circumnavigates the old man's head, bathing it in oscillating blue. A high-definition, three-dimensional image of Raymond's brain appears on the wall behind. 
I've been inspired by Mr. Lee here. We're going to do some editing of your memories to relieve your burden. No, Mama. Wait, I've figured out what to do. Your payment will be made according to our agreement, once the rest of them are dead. I've taken a big risk showing you that. I don't give a rat's ass. You see, I knew it. I told you the plague. Raymond's alive. Stang's holding him at Prosperity Tower. He may be alive, but looks like his mom's gonna erase part of his memory, just like Johnny Plastic here. She's gonna try and fix him. What kind of mother would do that? Shit, that's it. He's wiping. Uh, oh, hello. Well, isn't this awkward? What do you want to do with this guy? He's got no memory, so it's probably safe to let him go. But Ani said he should take a dirt nap. It's all the same to me. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I forgot Kindly wanted him dead. Um... Jeez. Do we potentially piss off kindly? Okay, we let him go, I think. Kindly just want us to put him in the ground to piss off Josephine. But I think we're going to, like, be heading to Josephine directly um, to mess her up in person, so... Hopefully that'll have to satisfy kindly. I do appreciate it, whoever you are. What are you going to tell kindly? She said to kill him. I'll tell her the truth. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that works for me. The trip from Shekip May back to Hioi is quiet as you process the information revealed by the plastic-faced man. Prosperity is a name. Two names, actually. One is a secret project Raymond was working on before he left Seattle. The other is the corporate headquarters of Tsang Medical Services. Mechanical Services. And Prosperity Towers, where Raymond Black is being held. Alive. It's also where his memory is in the process of being reprogrammed by his mother, and time is kicking. Alrighty. One second. Um. The plastic-faced man proved surprisingly amenable and quite useful. Perhaps that's why you let him go. Your next stop is Kindly Cheng. She'll want to hear this. Although you may leave out the part about letting him go. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie. Especially not to Auntie. She probably already knows. You step out of the MTR station and into the balmy night air, an impenetrable wall of clouds, heavy with imminent rain, has blown in from the south. It covers the stars, causes them to wink out one by one. 
You can smell something in the air, something electric. The wind whips up around you, and the clouds begin moving in a thick grayscale swirl. And the spiral builds and grows, shimmering with faint, faint amber light. Okay. As you watch the clouds roil in the sky, the sounds of the city retreat. A bubble of soft white noise replaces them, wrapping around your head and reflecting your own heartbeat back at you. Let's head back to uh, the Big Texas. You turn your head back toward the Big Texas, toward your teammates and the relative comfort of your new home. A moment later, you feel an incredible tightness in your chest. It feels like your heart is being crushed under the foot of a giant. Oh. Try and catch your breath. You gasp for air, it doesn't come. You stumble forward, and every cell in your body seems to vibrate. The energy thrums inside of you, pulsating, building to an unbearable crescendo. And then, you're on the other side of it. You find yourself standing in a familiar courtyard. The walled city. You're back in the walled city, just like in your dreams. You can taste the stench of the place, the mildew and plaster and wet dog stink of the slum. What the? The crumbling facades of tenement buildings lean into one another above you, closing in on either side and creating a narrow walkway. Just like in your dreams, there's nowhere else to go, nowhere but forward, down the path ahead. Start walking, I guess. You let your legs carry you forward. You feel a creeping sense of certainty in the back of your mind, and it tells you that you've taken this same walk hundreds of times before. The sense of claustrophobia mounts and builds with every step you take. And it tells you that you've taken the same walk hundreds of times before. Oh, I'll read that. It feels like you're worming your way forward down a long, dark tunnel. The humidity of the place sticks to your skin. As you proceed deeper into the walled city, a low rumble fills the air. The noise of enormous gears in motion. You feel hollow, empty, and with every step you take, you can feel that emptiness growing, an unbearable yearning unlike any hunger you've ever known. You continue walking, just as you always have, just as you were meant to. Off in the distance, an alien silhouette beckons to you. It's her. The tall, slender thing from your dreams. The elusive figure you've always been moving toward, but could never quite reach. A crowd of locals lines the path ahead, kneeling in supplication. They look emaciated, all skin and bones, clothed head to toe in dirty rags. 
examine them. You stare at the ne nearest of the near kneeling figures, a wiry man in his late twenties. He locks eyes with you. Slowly his mouth yawns open. The man has no teeth. They've been pulled, and recently, from the looks of it, his gums are a bloody, pitted mess. As you stare into the black void of his mouth, his tongue comes lolling out. It looks like it was caught in an industrial accident, a swollen, twisted slab of meat. The corners of the young man's mouth twitch upward into a ghastly smile. What happened to you? The man with the ruined tongue doesn't respond. He kneels in silence, staring as your feet carry you past him. Seconds later, he fades from view. Okay. <sighs> Your legs carry you deeper and deeper into the beating heart of the tenement. It's incredibly hot and humid in here. The sweat rolls down your body in sheets. Your, your thoughts go hazy with the heat, and a dim sense of unease takes root in the pit of your stomach. Focus. You try to concentrate on the unease you're feeling, but you find it impossible to focus. The omnipresent sound of grinding gears is not helping. Looking up, you can see where the noise is coming from. A hatch. The same door you saw in your nightmare back when this all began. The mark markings on the door are legible now. A single word in faded yellow paint. Prosperity. Suddenly, impossibly, the alien figure that you've been moving toward is standing right in front of you. At the same time, your vision clears, and ice water runs through your veins. The walled city isn't a slum at all. It's an enormous, gaping maw, and the buildings are a forest of crooked teeth. The thing reaches for you with inhuman speed and grace. It plunges fingers of polished ivory into your mouth. Slowly, terribly, it begins to wrench your jaw open. You can feel your teeth splinter and break, and... Rough fingers on your shoulders snap you back to reality. The hand clenches into a vice-like grip and yanks you backward off your feet. You come crashing down to the floor of the Hioi MTR, MTR station. You can feel a rush of wind just in front of you. A passing train. What's wrong with you, the plague? Auntie Chung's lost too many runners already. Besides, there are cleaner ways to end your life than jumping in front of a train. Oh. As just in the walled city, there was this thing. You were hallucinating, and you almost just got yourself killed. Now get up and get back to that floating wreck you sleep in. You don't get to die in here unless Miss Cheng says you do. Um, okay. Thanks, Strangler. I appreciate it. Um... Well, that was a strange dream. I guess we found the plastic fist, man. So that's good. Oh, that's a lot of karma. It's not 27, but... On. Can we get eight more karma before the game ends? Probably not.
The walk through the mahjong parlor is punctuated by the tantalizing smell of coconut and fried confection. Your crew surrounds kindly Cheng, watching uncomfortably as she peels small, egg-shaped delicacies from a waffle-like pastry and pops them in her mouth. Each time she does, her eyes close in ecstasy and, soft, and a soft sound comes from her throat. There you are, the plague. Your crew here tells me that you were able to locate and interrogate the plastic-faced man. They haven't told me his current disposition, however. I assume everything went as I instructed. Um. Ooh. Avoid the question for the moment. No, he's dead. No, I let him walk away. I thought I was clear I wanted him dead. Um, you were clear, Auntie, but he was very accommodating, and I chose to reward him for it. He better have been pretty damn and accommodating for you to disobey me. I trust you got something useful out of him. We got plenty. He gave us a data dump on everything he knew about Prosperity Tower. First had first hand info. Josephine's headquarters. That could be useful, I suppose. What do you intend on doing with it? We're going to rescue Raymond. He's alive, Auntie, just like I said he was. Josephine's holding him there. She's doing something to his brain. Something to his brain? What's that old bitch up to now? Based on the memory that Mr. Plastic showed us, it looks like she's trying to rewire her son's memories using something called ASSIST, Artificial Sensory Induction Systems Technology. It allows the user to record, process, and feed synthetic sensory input into the brain. Like a SimSense chip. Yes, Auntie, it's the technology that led to the SimSense. It's also what allows Deckers to enter the Matrix and grants rigors and neural connection to their drones. An expert ASSIST technician could alter someone's personality, memory, even identity. Sounds complicated. It is. It requires a massive amount of computing power, and it's not like a temporary SimSense experience. Changing someone's memories requires a world-class expert in assist. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing to him, but I'm guessing that his mom wants him to forget something, or to remember it differently, maybe. Um... Yeah, we have to get to Raymond before he isn't Raymond. That means a run on Prosperity Tower. Isabel and I have been studying the data the Plastic Faced Man gave us about it. Lots of good intel to mine there. Um, talk about the security setup. The key to this operation are the three security stations located on different floors. The matrix systems in these security stations are the command and control hubs for the entire building security. As such, they're the best place to find out where Raymond Black is being held. That's all we've got on his location? All we know is he's being held somewhere called Lab 12. But where that is or how to get there is something we need to figure out on site. If things go hostile, the best thing to do is to get an alarm panel or a matrix security node and shut things down. If we're noticed, we'll have a brief window to cut the link to the alarm system. If we do that, it will isolate the whole floor from the security system. The rest of the building won't know what's happening there. The alarm goes off, and we cut the link to the alarm system, we can spoof the system. Tell that we've moved on to another location. Okay. That might work once or twice, but if we spoof too many alarms, they'll figure it out. How long is the brief window? Maybe 30 seconds? Maybe less if the network isn't cluttered with traffic. It's there as a failsafe, so security doesn't stampede all over the building if a janitor forgets to close the door. Um, what about guards? Standard corp security for the most part, but Sang has a rapid response squad for high priority events. That would be us. Uh, 
Yeah, I think that that would definitely qualify as a high priority event. Judging by the way Grandma Sang took out Carter, got shot in Nightjar, I'd say she isn't interested in anyone getting anywhere near her son. Expect to face Sang's elite security once we find him. Uh, what else do we know? Only one thing worth mentioning. The only way into security stations with a key card, and guards on each floor carry a card to station on that floor. So we can get a card by taking them out there. So we can get a card by taking them out. But there may be other ways of getting key cards. Like I said, security stations are the key to this operation. They provide multiple opportunities to exploit the system and determine how to approach the rest of our incursion. Okay. We want to take them fast before they have a chance to respond. Uh, which station? No way to know. We'll need to take one of them and use it to determine our next step. It's like we have directions to go find a map. Okay. Let's hope it's enough to give us an edge. Uh, how do we stop this assist? All we know is that an assist device is located in Lab 12. It's the only one in the building. Now, I doubt that Grandma will just hand over the passcodes to her system if we ask nicely. So we'll need a Decker to access the assist device and eject him from the system safely before she scrambles his brain. Sure. Like I said, we don't know. We're going to have to improvise, figure out when we get there. How do we make our approach? Fortunately, Prosperity Tower is one of Tang's lower security stations. It's mostly administrative, marketing, that sort of thing. That's good. Mr. Bao, give the runners those old Sang security passes you used on that hijacking last year. Yes, Miss Chang. They get, they'll get them. Those passes should get you through the lobby. You'll still have to explain your presence to the plague, so don't expect to just walk on through. And yeah, what about the junk data? Good thinking. I'm already ahead of you. I scoured the leftover whooshing paperwork and found a way to change our status to special couriers. We can use that to pose as a third party whooshing uses to deliver important packages. That'll work for a while, but we can't expect to stay in cover for long. One way or another, things are gonna get hot. Um... Yeah, okay. We need an edge. Okay, I'll get us booked into the Sang system and I'll print off some uh, matching papers. We'll need a van to make it look legit. Bow. Consider it done. One other thing. While I was helping Duncan verify as much of this data as I could, I decided to collect our marker with Bull and his team of runners. Oh, okay, yeah. Good call. Yeah, no kidding. Turns out Bull and our runner friends, friends hit Sang a few months back. Low around smash and grab for another corp. But they got a quick scan of the building's matrix security before they rabbited. They gave us data flags that pinpoint where the security nodes are located inside of Sang's system. So when we jack into the security station, we'll be able to make a direct attack on the security node. That could just buy us set the seconds we'll need to cut the alarm link. Sweet. One more thing, the plague. While you're in her headquarters, look for anything we can use to incriminate or embarrass Josephine. I want dirt. Something I can feed to an acquaintance on the executive council. Someone who stands to gain from it. Um, right after arresting my father. <laughs> of course, my sweet. Of course. Now go enjoy Prosperity Tower and give Josephine my regards. Sweet. Let's do this. Oh, do I have enough karma? No, I don't. I need three more. Oh, come on. No, not three more. I need four more. Let's talk to our good friend, Reliable Matthew.
we have anything to sell? Uh, so I have this weird other Isabel's deck that I don't think that we probably should have. Very confused by that. Oh, there's so much weird garbage in our inventory. Let's get rid of the drugs. No, we have to actually bring the stupid mummy talisman when we go. Let's actually remember to use it. Later, Matthew. This might be the last time I talk to you. Let's talk to our shaman friend. I'm guessing this isn't actually last run. Uh, probably will say Brayman, he'll tell us how to stop prosperity, and then we'll have a run, I'm assuming, in Kowloon Walled City to stop it. So maybe I will get that last four karma I need. Hey there, still don't have any new information on the Yama Kings of the Dreams. I think we're gonna have to wait and see how things shake out. Sure, you're useless, Crafty. Let's get our pay data that we posted. Even though we don't really have anything to spend the money on. And we'll, uh, we'll go. Jobs. Yeah, get that pay data. Nice. Oh? From Dreamland. Good luck with your whole what happened to my father thing. Rough deal. If nothing else, I hope the people responsible get what's coming to them and that my neural inhibitor program helps you get some payback. It did, thank you. Well, that was sweet. Okay, let's go infiltrate. I will just take the OG team with us. Refugee. Are there way more people here to talk to than usual? A pair of dead-eyed transients lean against the abandoned car, their shoulders slumped. A pile of overstuffed bags lie in a heap on the sidewalk, spilling into the rain-choked gutter. The smaller of the pair looks down, notices those bags are getting soaked, and does nothing. Seems like he's too exhausted to care. No more chance. Oh, so people are, like, evacuating. I'm gonna fix it. Oh, can you tell me about Yama Kings? Okay, you guys have been less than helpful. Oh, do I have enough money for those legs yet? I don't quite think that we do, actually. I think it was 1750. Oh, let's go. Uh, rescuing Raymond, uh, we're just taking the OG team. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, we definitely need to take Isabel. We need the Decker.
Infiltrating the headquarters of a megacorp and locating Raymond Black will be challenge enough. Extricating him from his mother's assist device before his memories are permanently altered is another thing altogether. You hop, you hop the MP, MTR South Island line and roll noisily down the nearby island of Apple Chow, a dense forest of soaring skyscrapers and corporate greed. Amid them, blending innocuously with its neighbors, stands Prosperity Tower. Emerging from the MTR station, you find a delivery van waiting for you, just where Strangler Bao said it would be. You pull the van around the building to the loading dock of Tsang Mechanical Services and its CEO, Josephine Tsang. Okay, so... Wait, can I take Isabel's death now? No. Oh. Why do we have, like, a spare, crappy Isabel stack that we can't use? Got it, you need a mummy. Here's a mummy. Got it, you need healing. Here's a healing. Actually, no, here's a shamanic salve. Hey, Duncan, you need more grenade. What do you need? You need a res med kit and here, take take a repair kit. Me, I need a med kit. Sweet. Just realized something, one second. I still have, um... Oh, right. Okay, I still have this overlay enabled for, uh... Go to save it. There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't have no karma to buy any. Okay, only five. A metallic scent hits you as you enter the parking dock. A swirl of gas, oil, and steel packing crates. The, th the fluorescent lighting above casts a gross hue throughout the dingy garage. One of the lights in the corner is out, smashed in by the looks of it. It seems the behind-the-scenes world of Tsang is just as dirty as its business practices. Not far in front of you stand a couple of corporate workers, unaware of, or at least indifferent to, your presence. Security may look tight, but we're not in yet. Words will only get us so far. Things are bound to get heated eventually. Just be prepared to cover your ass when the bullets fly. We've got a lot to get past before we can get to Raymond. He's right. Keep our objective in sight. Mainly said we can find information on Raymond's location and security stations. It'll be tricky getting into them, but once we do, that's also where we can cut the alarm system. I kindly didn't say that, you and Duncan did. Once we find Raymond, I'd be happy to help with his liberation. Oh, and as far as the Tsang security passes, we shouldn't rely solely on them. They'll help, but using them alongside our own wits will be the most effective. Okay, so it's, uh, well, we would have just saved. Actually, let's save again so we don't have to go through that conversation if we die. So, 
So yeah, we'll use our own wits. Hello, sir. The loading dock supervisor is glued to his monitor, his hand holding a sound piece up to his right ear. You hear a faint cheer come from the device, and he shoves his fist into the air in triumph. Thor! With his eyes now off the screen, he spots you. Well, it's about time. You you really the special courier Wuxing sent to deliver our load of Enviro controller chips? Yeah, I don't like this crap around for fun, you know. Hey, you never know. Policy to check. Speaking of, let's see your credentials. Huh, checks out, huh? Delivery standards have really dropped these days. Hmm. Take that shipment to security station uh, in the sub basement. This door here will lead you to the right floor. Once you check things at the station, head back here. Don't wander off. Your clearance is for only the sub basement. The guards around here are strict as sin. Made a joke to one once, and he nearly glared me in half. I swear, they must have the sense of humor. Uh, they must have had their sense of humor surgically removed. Is okay, leave the van here. Crew's on lunch, so you should have plenty of time. I'll buzz you in once you get back. Right. Cool being sub basement it is. Maintenance manager. Let's walk around a bit. Door card reader. Oh, no, yeah, let's read this sign as well. Security, okay. Locker room. Human maintenance worker, orc maintenance worker, sure. Hmm. And who are you supposed to be? It's my first day. Well, then welcome to the shit show that's floor B3. Our boss is a dick, bad at everything, and loves to blame others. That's why the company put her down here. Any tips? Yeah, don't screw up. You're at Sang now. Not even our god-awful boss will tolerate anything less than your best. In fact, I suggest you make it a habit to check in with her early. She hates it when people are late. And with how much she enjoys pointing that finger, stay on her good side. Sure. Hmm, I don't know the code. Oh well. Okay, so we're not going past him. Let me just look at the sign, sir. First aid station. Whoa. Don't want to get too close to the guards. Okay, let's go into maintenance. Hello, manager. I'm here to check in. Checking in early. You're greeted by the side of a dwarf leaning against the desk, nose deep inside a book. The plaque next to her hip reads, Maintenance Lead. She holds up her finger to silence you, eyes locked on her story. After a moment, she dog-ears her page and sets the book on top of the desk. By the way she sizes you up, you can tell she's not in the business of making friends. Yes. Um. Ooh, do we use our charisma? Or etiquette, which is, I guess, also from our charisma. Let's go with our six charisma. Maybe. No, I mean, I'm... Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> well, aren't we here? You can count on me. 
Before you do anything around here, you've got to change out of those ridiculous clothes. Hit the locker room and grab a uniform. Show some goddamn company pride. Well, at least they finally sent me somebody. Here, the locker code. Sweet. Our clothes aren't that ridiculous. I mean, maybe. Maybe they are. Twenty six, twenty seven. Cool. The rest of their team begrudgingly rifles through the locker, picking out uniforms closest to their size. One by one they button up, and soon a hodgepodge of frumpy maintenance workers stand before you. A little tight in the arms, but great on the hips. I could really tear up a dance floor in this. This is the pose I used to win hearts. <laughs> Law, she swivels her hips and spins on her heel. When she comes back around, she grabs her chin and strikes a pose. Law. Hope Sang doesn't mind if I keep this. Really? Oh, one karma, so we only need the uh, three more. Can we gain three karma? Okay, boss, I'm here for my job. Much better. Should I assume this is your new sector? Yeah. <sighs> About time I got some help down here. I've got a task to break you in fast. The autocoupler on the main terminal is out. Flow regulators need a restart. restart. Engage its airflow mixers, then report back. Sure thing. I'm gonna save. I'm not sure how this will help us get into the security station. Hopefully we'll have a job there. And that'll give us the excuse to be in there. A standard model terminal. Everything looks fairly basic, including its controls. You know something flashing in the corner of the screen, a message entitled Urgent. Lee, I need you to get your team together and fix the climate turbine. Make it top priority. It's been radiating heat on warm days and cooling on cold days. People around the office are getting pissy. I'm not going to take their crap or, uh, on your behalf. So the longer you wait, the more your quarterly review will suffer. Sure. Reboot. Walk away. We're good little corporate drones. What's our next job? It seemed like anyone could have I was just like hitting a button. Good work, rookie. That's all I need for now. Why don't you take a break? Just do it outside my office. I've got a date with a new novel. Oh. Um. Oh yeah, the main... There was another thing. <laughs> what? You signed off on the goddamn turbine engine? We can't do that. I'd need... I'd need at least a crew of four level three techs to even do an evaluation of that thing. I thought it might help us get ahead of things around here. Crap, rookie. If you signed off on the order, we've got to do it, or this department is sunk. This is what we're going to do. You head to the turbine. I'll unlock the admin controls from here. Now, it's very important, very expensive piece of machinery. So you do exactly what I say. Got it? Got it. Try to repair the turbine. I like that our objective is to just try. Where is the turbine? Do I go back to this terminal? The mains terminal? Oh, sweet. 
All right, rookie. I've started the turbine in standby mode, so its electronics should be working. I need to troubleshoot the issue from your end while I reference the ma machine's manual on my end. Now let's see. So let's here we should start by repressurizing the hydraulics. There should be a program on your terminal specifically for monitoring and controlling the turbine. Once you're in there, select the hydraulics and hit the appropriate command. Well, that's something. Indicator lights are still red. Some, sometimes the engine's seismo radar connection becomes misaligned, so try adjusting that. Shouldn't need to move it more than a couple centimeters. Okay. Huh. Maybe the rotor speed needs to be recalibrated. And done. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Hey, that's it. Don't let the noise fool you. We've identified the problem. The rotor must have been recalibrated the opposite of what it needed. One more try and it should fix the turbine. Give it a go. Oh, what are we supposed to do? No, let's repair it. Let's be good. That's what I want to hear. Great work. I'll remember this come your next review. Anything else I can do? Since you're new here, that means you're part-time, right? So I just you head on home. Catch up on some trade. You deserve it after this. Okay, so that bought us absolutely nothing. Um, oh, well. We should have, I guess, sabotaged it? I don't know. Security key card. Do you have a security key card, ma'am? This wasn't helpful at all. Damn it. Okay, so there are two guards here. Is that the alarm right there? Is there another alarm panel? I don't see one. So we take this gap as quickly as possible with Duncan. Wait, why is he not? Okay. I thought we zapped him. Ace. I love Duncan's stun baton. Found those the guardian. This this is the wolf found right. Alarm window three. Got it. Get that. Just run over here. Oh, crap. This could have gone better. Uh, there's no way we're making it to this console in time, is there? 
Maybe just barely. Reload, please. Slap this guy. Well, you tried your, your best. Oh nice, he is knocked out from the gas. I think we've royally screwed this up. Okay, it's all on you. I think I just blew the alarm window. Damn it. I want to see what happens if we sabotage the. Yeah. No. We'll live with this. Let's just keep slapping. Guys, let's go. Go here. Assassinate. Good job. Oh, 
programs do we have? Killer? One, four, five. Nine, three, four, four. Seven, two, two, three, two. Four, eight, one, three, nine. Nine, seven, five, nine, nine, five. Okay. No, damn it. Um, middle one. This, 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 this. We did it. Woo. You hack the node, and the vulnerable network is quickly infected by spoof programs. Within a matter of seconds, the programs spread across the system, sending false security alarms throughout saying, The security network is becoming less and less stable. More guards pick up the summons to locate each alarm's origin, but they continue to only find dead ends. Sweet. What's over here? Okay, so we have two guys there. Okay, Duncan can't quite get to them, so he can just stand over there. You can barely see me. White ice, black melee. Oh, a watcher. out of the way of the watch eyes. So let the watcher pass.
Okay, I'm almost dead. Let's get some healing out. Knock everyone out. Mm. Not that one. We don't want to accidentally wake up anyone. Seven, nine, four, three, nine, three, seven, two, seven. Come on. Sign Company has increased its security measures in a company-wide movement to protect its investments. Sign's actions on this matter are to remain company knowledge only. Any mention or leak of this information will not be tolerated. Employees found guilty of divulging the said security movement to outside parties will be blacklisted and purged from Sign Mechanical Services. Security protocols will double throughout Sign's proper. In the case of Laboratory 12, security will be enhanced threefold for optimum protection. Those who work in labo Laboratory 12 will be upgraded to the Omega level clearance. Admittance to the laboratory will be heavily monitored, and all visitors must have Omega clearance or higher. With critical business in the area. The captain of this station has pre-approved a limited release of Laboratory 12's elevator code to Omega personnel. Receive this message as proof of your authorization. Warning. <coughs> Excuse me. This information is highly sensitive and should remain restricted to Omega Plus knowledge only. Visitor violators will experience aforementioned blacklisting and company purging. Uh, read the maintenance and security thread. Did you ask to change the locker code again? Okay, so that's just how we would get that code without asking the manager. Four nine nine zero. Okay. Four nine nine zero. Enforcer, you down, my man. I'm slapping you again. Nope, I missed. Damn it. There. Gotta keep them slapped. Start making your way out. Got it. Enter code. 
4990. Isabel telepathically transmitted the code to you. Let's just sit here uh, slapping her. swap things out anymore. Oh, whatever. I need to remember I have that mummy thing. Uh, can we put our armor back on? I think that the, the jig is up. Nope. Okay. Drop it off in the back room and clear out. Oh, if we like went in this properly and said that we had a delivery, I guess he would have said that. Lol. My six or forty nine. Okay. Sales. Okay, game just saved, so. Excuse me, ma'am, but signing employees on this floor may only be seen through a pre-approved appointment. Not even maintenance is exempt. Do you have an appointment? It will only take a second. Just need to tweak some air units. If they get fixed on your watch, it'll look good on your record. Then I can get on with the rest of my work orders, too. I'll win for both of us. What do you say? <laughs> hmm, I don't see why not. Just try to have an appointment ready next time, okay? To access the air units, uh, will you need... Employees to clear the area. I can get security to usher people out if that would help. Nah, it's fine. Now so let's look at these signs. Don't mind me, guard. VP of operations. We probably don't want to go in there. Worker. What is this sign? Security, okay. Should guard right there. Another worker. Yeah, let's talk. To, oh, that's a manager. Let's talk to the normal worker. Man, I wish my office looked like this. The woman before you looks like one very burnt out suit. Quarterly is just around the corner. Uh, you need to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, why not? I'll never see you again. I could use a good venting session. It's the stack ranking here. My team, contracts, and acquisitions is in the deep end, but not because we're slackers like sales would have you believe. Because the system isn't based on merit, we're working our asses off over here while sales don't even have to lift a finger. And while they're ranked ahead of us, they're way behind work-wise. Guess what? Slang doesn't care about it. All they look at are their ranks. 
Come this quarterly review, whoever's last in the stack rankings will get demoted. Or worse, sent back to the training pool. Ugh. Yeah, I bet the other team's taking advantage. You have to tell me, sales is reveling in our distress and rubbing their success in our faces. But it's not just that. They're also undermining our work by denying us important data that my team needs in order to hand off our contracts to sign upper management. As if rankings weren't enough. What if I get you that data? It's in for you. Ah, oh, my charisma just isn't high enough. Yeah. But what? Oh. Oh, okay. If it comes to it, I'll take the heat. Sweet. Sales team's data for the code. Let's get that data. I think I probably need higher charisma for this. Um, I guess not mind if I just use this terminal right. What the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> okay, let me let me talk to you. Got word of a level 8 maintenance issue right here in your office? If it's not fixed now, things will get mesh messy. I need everyone out of this room for the next half hour. Damn it. You have no right to traipse in here and start making unfounded demands for me and my workers. Any and all repairs you need to make must be made after we've left at the end of the business day. If you have a problem with this, take it up with security. Uh, maybe I do need them evacuated out. Damn it. Okay, can we go in and talk to the VP? Hello, sir. I've been expecting you. Like the maintenance uniforms, by the way. An enemy in our skin. Classic infiltration tactic. Wait, what? You messing with me? Not at all. I'm well connected here at Sang. I advise everywhere. And when I was informed of your presence in the building, I knew it was the opportunity I've been waiting for. Huh. Before you decide anything, at least hear me out. You're in a position to come out of this with an edge against saying. That alone should be enough to pique your interest. What's your game? It just so happens you've stumbled into the right place at the right time. I imagine that doesn't happen often in your line of work. I'm listening. I know you're on the job, but this won't take long. Josephine is running this corporation into the ground. Much like the way you're undermining her efforts here today, I too am preparing to make a move against her. And therein lies the beauty of our situation. We're in a position to help each other out. What do you need done? It's simple. I give you access to Sang's core system, and while inside, you retrieve some data for me. Yeah, I want that, uh, if you give us the access, I want that look pretty strange. A little tritio editing, some creative violence on my guard's part, and we'll claim you assaulted us and entered the Matrix by force. Your invasion of our direct system will only bolster our strikes against Josephine. Deal. 
Excellent. The information I need is in the data store labeled foreign accounts. Return those files to me, and you're welcome to whatever else you find in the Matrix. Don't get clumsy. Avoid setting off the system alert, or my associates and I will have to kill you to cover up our part of the scheme. I can't afford to arouse any suspicion. And should you try to leave this office, I don't have my files. Our deal's off. I'll see to it you don't leave this building alive. Play your cards right, Runner. This may be the beginning of a new business relationship. You got it, baby. Isabel, get in there. Oh. Destroyer ice. I don't think we've found one of those before. Oh, it has a lot of health. Is it melee? Let's tar blast it. Um, erosion. Sign business. Foreign accounts. Uh, so we need the foreign accounts. So let's go take a peek at this. Block your ice rating nine. Attack it. Four nine six eight. Eight four three two. Five eight nine four five. Four nine one. Five six. Okay, hopefully we have enough time. An M and a W starts with. Uh oh. Is it this one? Whew. Financial record. Walled City Low Income Housing Project Financial Records. Access the Executive Summary. The Executive Summary describes the finances of the Walled City construction contract. Applying mechanical services received about 950 million million from other corporations via the Executive Council. It then spent this money to build the Walled City. Most is a dense description of costs, targets, metrics, financial analysis, and accounting methods. However, a short section of the final paragraph stands out. Achieved 35% diversion of funds while maintaining worksmanship at generally acceptable levels. Severe downward cost pressures, large finance risk, and information control presented major challenges in executing a financial strategy for the WCL IHP. The co-construction of two concurrent initi initiatives, WCL IHP and Prosperity, presented a major financial as well as operational challenge. Such large funding diversions are difficult to adequately obfuscate. The author again wishes to note that the WCL IHP official records in their current form still may not withstand scrutiny during the post-project audit by the Executive Council. Deep revision ex post facto is advised. Scan. The language of these documents is an opaque log or fog of finance and accounting. Without special training, it is incomprehensible. The associated visuals are a tangle of pie charts and dynamic graphs with data layers like pre-adjustment accruals, taxable share, payroll allocations, and deprecation flow. Most are uninteresting or esoteric. However, three options stand out. Cash flow. A layer of luminous green lines appear, flowing through the system chart that appear to be budgets and fund reservoirs, coded for various purposes. The green lines are divided into two sections, each has glowing white text beneath. Okay, project receivables, fund reallocation. This is an in oh, redacted. Okay. Utilities. 
A dense network of tiny nodes and branching lines appears inside the system chart. It seems to be a granular mapping of all utility-related allocations, expenditures, and assets. An organizational hierarchy forms beside the system chart, listing upper management of the utilities component. At the top, you see a familiar name, Edward Sang. Directly beneath him are two subordinates, Cameron Yu. Under Cameron Yu, a full org chart fans out dozens of names and positions. The name of the second subordinate is missing. In place, redacted. Under the second subordinate, a much larger organizational chart appears with hundreds of nodes. In this second chart, however, the same word accompanies every node, redacted. Thin threads of yellow light spring from numerous nodes in the huge system chart and begin flowing through others. The yellow threads snake down below, bouncing through a series of nodes and changing colors until they converge into a single brilliant point. An incandescent white word appeared beside it. Prosperity. No file. Download. Okay, we got some goods. That'll make Auntie happy, I hope. Ah. Two, five, six, seven. Three, eight, seven, four. Five, seven, two, two, two. Two, six, two, five, four. Okay, we have fun. Come on. W. Longer than I should. Inside the foreign accounts file is a series of recent transactions. It looks pretty standard. Several signed monetary deals with foreign partners and businesses, some money incoming, some money outgoing. A closer look at the files, and a variance in the pattern appears. It seems a few of the deals are encoded to prevent them from appearing in the company's standard financial logs. Interestingly, of the handful of encoded files, all contain records of deals established through bribery with some of Sang's business partners. Even more interesting is the chunk of clean million that's attached to the data. Interesting. So, we got the goods for the dude. Jack out. There you go. Very good. You came through as promised. A wise choice. I may have need of reliable people such as yourself in the future. See ya. By the way, can I have like a security access code? No? That was less helpful than I thought it would be. Get out of here, lady. Sorry, I can't get the data. So if I attack the security guards here, will uh, well, there are two out here, and then I'm assuming some will come in from that security room. Oh, there are three out here. Uh, but will I have to fight the ones in here? Oh no, these are just uh, corporate dudes. I'm guessing I won't have to fight them. I 
could just leave this floor for now. Huh. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's a bad idea, but it looks like it's optimal. We don't have to hack all the nodes. Oh, if we can get to the alarm quick enough, then it will be even better. Okay. Uh, so Duncan, you... No! 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 Freaking hell, why? Duncan, you need to do this. Oh, gob it. You pick this up. Open this door for Isabel. about you need to get on that console ASAP huh. okay. okay I can't haste anyone right now let's just get in whatever cover we can find. Guardian. A conjurer. Okay, grenadiers must die. <laughs> Ow. Oh my god, I'm almost dead. Please don't kill me. Yes, confirm. Those two cross paths, and then that comes from that direction. Those cross paths, and that comes from this direction. So this is the one that I want to go through. <laughs> no, don't attack the watcher eyes. Just this one watcher. Oh.
Okay, okay, let's see. We have to hiss Duncan. We have to... Oh, we can't heal. Oh, okay, duh. Uh, can't acid fog anymore, okay. I'd like to acid fog inside of that room. Some grenades we have. Flashbang. <clears throat> Very cool. Dunk, go panda stew. Killer. Kill that stinky eyes. Okay. Nine nine five one. Five. What? Three four two four. One, six, six, nine, four. Three, four, nine, one, five. Four, eight, one, two, two, three. You hack the node, and the now vulnerable network is quickly infected by spoof programs. Okay, it's the same same thing. Let's go to the other side, get whatever deeps we can. Duncan, you need to arrest someone. This dude. And slap. Good job. Let's 
guy's injured. Let's take him out. Oh, I'm just sort of out in the open. That's no good. Suppressing fire. I'm missing so badly. I need to heal myself. Is that? Oh my god, they almost killed me. Assassin, assassinate, please. Good boy. Oh, no, 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 no. Four, three, six. Oh, come on. Seven, nine, five, four. Four, two, nine, seven, nine. Two, six, nine, one, five. Eight, eight, two, two, one, eight. Okay, we have time for this. I'll dub you. 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 I'll dub you
Okay, that was super quick. The captain of this station has pre-approved a limited release of Laboratory 12's elevator code to Omega personnel. We received this message as proof of your authorization. A list of digital conversations that have been sent from this floor appears. One particular in exchange between a signing executive and an employee in accounting looks promising. Passcode to the Magical Research Center. As a new recruit to the accounting team, and with security being so tight, I lack access to the center's files that are necessary to perform my biannual accounting report. I appreciate it if you'd send me the codes by end of day today. No. What you're asking is extremely unorthodox and in blatant disregard of company protocol. My department is under constant scrutiny and I can't afford a leak. You'll have to go through the proper channels and fill out the required paperwork if you want the passcodes. Allow me to rephrase my request. You send me the passcodes and I'll review the Magical Research Center's finances. I heard that your lab's been hemorrhaging funds this last quarter. Perhaps I could massage those numbers to make the lab appear more monetarily efficient. <laughs> Attached are the passcodes to my department's core system terminal. You will access the system only under my direct supervision. Sweet. Subdue. I can get on that terminal now. What? She isn't even here now. That's BS. So we have the Lab 12 access code. Why do we have two different Lab 12 access codes? Special projects passcodes. Communications data score, device operations, optical. Okay, whatever. Save the game, so. Hello, sir. Whoa, slow down there. There's a restricted area. I need to see your ID. Is that right? Got someone here saying she's with maintenance. We have anything like that scheduled. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Damn it. Where are they going? What were all those sounds? There's no way we can get to the terminal in time. Uh, so that's feels bad.
Thanks, Drono. Go open the door for Izzy. Haste, Isabel. Okay, Duncan, go hit this guy. Oh no, that's no good. Or take one. Damn it. Fine. This will. Run, 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 run. Poor Duncan. I'm sorry, Dunk. I'll be out there to heal ya. forth and destroy mine enemies. Okay, we can do this goblet. Use the key card. Damn it, I don't have enough AP. <sighs> yeah, alarm's about to go off. That means the plague needs to get the heck out of dodge.
Okay, two more there. Okay, that's some good damage. Have fun with that guy. Um, can I overwatch? Ow, oh, please don't kill me. Damn it. Okay, let's try and get this pattern down. Okay, it does look a little bit dicey. that. run here. That we don't have to worry so much about the watch rise. Protect us. Drones are not out because I. Okay. Oops. Oh, geez, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Not you. 
Okay, that's something. Yeah, look at how high our system trace is already. Thank you, Shield ESP. It just doesn't register right. I, I legitimately didn't see what that was. Two, nine, three, nine. Eight, two, six, five, eight. Eight, five, two, nine, one. Eight, one, eight, eight, six, five. Okay, we have to do this. Nice. Hmm. You hacked the node, and the vulnerable network is quickly flooded, blah blah blah, with the secure network completely compromised. Guards flood the communication channel with response calls, unable to locate where the alarms are coming from. Your whereabouts remain unnoticed amongst amongst the pandemonium. Ooh. Let's see what more data we can get. What is this? Is this a destroyer? No, it's just a melee ice, right? Acid fog. in there I think to yeah, let's just do it. Nope I didn't. So yeah, just come through here gentlemen. Just wanna talk. Enter code. Not lab twelve. Um Why are there two lab 12 access codes? Huh. That's weird. I thought I also had the code to this, but maybe not. Black melee ice. Nope, tar blast. I'll blast the tar out of you.
Nice. So we have another killer. 50 50? Mm. Oh well. Those weren't good odds. This will die from the erosion. Uh, this might be out of tar now. Let's see. Oh! Oh, 16 host damage because of black ice. Okay. That's no good. Missed? some sort of like a uh, passcode for um, the magical core computer thing but I don't see it listed anymore so I'm very confused and we're just locked out of that map maybe thanks Gobbit We like just barely can't see that guy. Okay, nice. Never been able to do this without Isabel. Ugh. I've tried this. A bulletin board dedicated to this forest faculty pops up. Several mundane topics are posted, but one titled Attention seems more promising than the others. An initial glance reveals that the floor has acquired new gear of some sort. Our security staff has been allocated extra gear to assist in the containment of our high-priority test subject. Effective immediately, all gear assigned to the fl this floor's patrols is to remain on this floor. No more lending or borrowing with other station staff. To ensure that others do not take our property, we've changed the code to the equipment room, which is now 8974. Is this the equipment room? No, it doesn't look like an equipment room. I'll try it. Nope. OK. 
Okay. Throw down another fog. Why is this guard still... Yeah, it would be, I guess, from security. That's it. 8974. Oh. Bombs away! Let's go down here where, with this spell. Manage. You know what? Sure. Manage. Um, no, no, no. Put it here. He doesn't have a res. Oh, sure, whatever. Manage. Yes. Manage. Here, Dunk. Uh, Dunking cannot use this. Well, damn. Of assault rifle. Run. Grenade. Um. I do like flashbangs, but let's just put them in our stash. Holy cow, that's a lot of grenades. I guess I should be using um, Duncan's grenades more liberally. Thaumaturgical lab. VP. Okay. Manage. Can you use this? No. Oh no, it's not a shaman thing. Yeah, let's just stash it. Manage. Yep, that's fine. Stash it. Get in, Isabel. Okay, another one of these big boys. Special Projects Communication. Assist Machine. Okay. We need both of these. Yeah, let's hack it. Three, five, seven, two. Six, four, seven, four. One, nine, four, three, eight.
Oh no, let's just try this. Uh, da, 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 da. Is this? Yes. A small data archive node springs to life. It appears to be a set of mails tagged to a reinitialized data center. The data center is labeled Special Projects. Dr. Yu, as I expressed in person, the Assist Based Security Project is on an accelerated timetable. As such, I require regular updates to track progress. What's the status of the device? Miss Sang. Please forgive my lack of proactive communication. I've been working around the clock to meet your timetable and was ignoring my mail in order to focus on the task. Lab 12 has already been refitted to support the assist project and I have several noted experts on memory modification contracted. The security project is ahead of schedule despite the timing concerns that I articulated in our initial conversation. I must stress, however, that even though we are ahead of schedule, the operation's probability of success is low. I just wish to set the appropriate level of expectations. I am pleased to hear you're ahead of schedule, Mr. Yu, but let us be clear. My expectations are already set. I expect success. Miss <laughs> Sang, were this a simple memory wipe or even a straight replacement? E.g. swapping one discrete memory for another. My confidence would be quite high. The technology and techniques are mature and well documented. The process of replacing a seminal event in a subject's timeline, and then revising its myriad downstream memories, is daunting work, even in an open-ended time frame. Given the duration of the task, I cannot in good conscience predict a higher than a slim probability of success. Deal with the seminal event in the prescribed timetable. Edward is 65. If the downstream memories appear contradictory or confusing, we will treat him for a medical condition linked to senility while we work the bugs out. Senility? I don't know. Denialness. Yes, madame. Let's go. Hack this. Seven, six, four, three. One, five, seven, three. Five, two, nine, five. One, three, six, five, two. Okay, I think we have enough time. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. That's the this one, right? Only a small quantity of data resides here. The file header says something about a shutdown procedure for Lab 12, but it's bogged down in technical terms and code names that make understanding the contents of the file difficult. However, one data block clearly contains a few passphrases. More passphrases. Okay. Engram Banks. Okay. Interesting. So we have two different numeric codes for lab 12. Under which one? Oh, which one? Whoa. This is neat. Okay, let's, uh, let's go. Oh, actually, I should save that for next time. Walk away. 
It's, it's definitely lunchtime. I normally go around two, so I've already stayed a little bit later than I wanted to. I think this is a good time to save and get out of here. So thanks for chilling with me. Peace out.